Hi, this is Matt Amberson, and today I want to go over the steps involved to program in our volatilities into your application using our file that we send out that has 10 parameters per month per stock. So each stock has a line, and here I have Google. I'll show you the file. Here's an example of a file. Each month has a days to expiration and at the money implied volatility for the market and at the money implied volatility for the ORATS forecast, a market slope, an ORATS forecast slope, a market derivative or kurtosis, ORATS forecast kurtosis, a put premium for the low strike wing or out of the money delta, a call premium for the high strike out of the money options, a minimum vega to use while spreading that premium for a volatility. And then uh, the next month starts after that. And I'm at, this is actually a, an example for month two, so <clears throat> I'm going to be using uh, month two information in here. Uh, for example, the at the money implied volatility is 29.97. Um, and the slope, you just can't see it's, it's rounded here, is 0 0.0012 or 0 0.0013. So I brought them over here. Here's the at the money vol, 29.97 the slope and the kurtosis or curvature, the stock price. So the first step, uh, and then the steps are down here. The first step is to calculate a delta and vega uh, for each strike using Black-Scholes. And then once we get that, we could calculate what the skew should be for each strike based on an at-the-money slope and kurtosis. So here we calculate a delta, here are the deltas, here are the strikes, and here are the vegas, and this is the goal, or this is what we're going to get to, and here's the formula. The formula is right here. Um, it's So you use the 29.972, which is our at-the-money volatility and then you implement this formula it has slope in there derivative uh, to find we're working on the 40 the strike the 450 strike to find the volatility at the 450 strike so that number relates to this number here and here's the 450 strike and then so once you get a uh, once you get an at the money or once you get a skew, then you could even get more refined and get a better delta and vega using, instead of using just one at the money volatility, you could use the actual strike volatility. So you could calculate the next step or the third step is to calculate a delta and vega with each strike's volatility. And then you could use that delta and vega to then recalculate uh, the, your skew again one more time so a total of two times with these new deltas and vegas. Now that you would be done for, uh, for the ORATS forecast, but for the ORATS uh, skew or smooth volatility, uh, it's, it's helpful but not imperative that you use the ex an external volatility skews in order to adjust the ORATS at the money to what the application is saying or what to the or to the users inputs for example the uh, the user could change the days to expiration and that will that will move the volatility up and down but generally the skew will the shape will stay the same so uh, what we recommend is take these extra steps in order to 
normalize the ORAT's smooth volatility to an external at the money volatility. So what we'll do to, to do this is we will bring each at each strikes average implied volatility. So you take the average of the call bid and the call offer, get an implied volatility for that, and then average that with the put bid and offer average, and you get an average at the money, or you get an average for the strike volatility. And then what we want to do is normalize that or kind of drag that volatility down to the 50 delta and then see what the the new at the money implied volatility is for that. So for example, we used a 29. Um, when we figure, we, when we try to f figure out what the uh, volatility is at the 50 delta for 450 strike, which happens to be a 77 delta, uh, we get 30.28. So using the formula um, in this column I, um, column I here for the 450, we're able to drag or drag this 31 volatility down to the at the money and get it to be a third. So it's a so it's a deep in the money, it's a low strike calculation that we now calculate at the adjusted to the 50 delta based on the slope and derivative that we provide. And then what you can do is then average these, uh, and we use a weighted average, and then here's the weightings volatility, or here's the weightings formula. We use an, uh, weighted at the, uh, a weighted average in order to determine what the new at the money implied volatility would be. And so it's it's almost a full point higher, 30.88 using this calculation. And then what you do is you insert that 30.88 where the 29.9 uh, was, and then you repeat these four steps, and then you have a pretty accurate skew that will f fit right on top of the implied volatilities that you're using live. So again, just to, to uh, summarize what we've done is we've uh, received a file from ORATS with each stock, with each month, 10 criteria per month. We've then calculated uh, deltas and vegas and then uh, volatility per each SKU. And then we repeated that step and then we took some extra steps to normalize this skew or adjust it to up or down. In this case, we adjusted our skew up to what the user was seeing in the market. Uh, that was slightly different from when we, we summar when the ORAT summarized it, and we were able to then adjust it upwards towards the market and get a pretty accurate volatility. Okay, so these are the steps to integrate. Uh, if you have any questions, Matt at ORATS, and thanks for your time.